Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Adam Ganeshow. I'm editor in chief at Mississippi Today. Uh, we are, if you're not familiar with us, we're a nonprofit newsroom based in Jackson. We cover uh, a lot of different things. Uh, it's a statewide newsroom. We, we kind of focus our bread and butter is state government and politics. But, uh, you know, we cover all things Mississippi and, and you can't you can't cover Mississippi adequately as a newsroom uh, uh, today without covering sports. And pleased to be here today with our uh, sports columnist who probably does not need an introduction for those of y'all watching, uh, Rick Cleveland. Rick, it's, it's great to be here with you. Great to be with you, Adam. Uh, great to be back in Omaha. It's that's cool. right. Well, that's why we're here today. Uh, I was just saying, I, I, if, if I'm not a Mississippi State fan myself, but if I were, I'd sure be antsy right now, passing time before uh, tonight's game one of the national championship series, the best of three series against Vanderbilt. Uh, Rick, you've been in Omaha. Uh, we kind of wanted to, to do this conversation today because, uh, you know, you're there now. You've been covering uh, Mississippi State's pretty dramatic run in, in this uh, in this series, this tournament. And, uh, of course, it's all coming to a head starting tonight with game one. Um, Rick, I, I want to ask you several things just about, you know, the experience and, uh, you know, what it's like up there right now. And of course, get your insight on the game uh, tonight and, and the series as a whole. But before I do that, I do want to uh, very quickly mention something that uh, I'm, I'm really excited about. Rick, you've been working on this a while. Uh, starting on this Thursday, uh, we are launching a sports podcast called Crooked Letter Sports with Rick and Tyler Cleveland. Uh, Rick, you know, of course, is the 14-time Mississippi Sports Writer of the Year. Uh, you know, he has this wealth of experience and, and knowledge about all things Mississippi sports. He has uh, friendships and relationships with so many uh, key people in, in the Mississippi sports culture. Uh, and, and he's launching this podcast for us this week with his son, Tyler. Uh, Rick, I'm going to ask you really briefly, just kind of tell us about the podcast and how it came about and, and what you're looking forward to about it. Well, I'm looking forward to doing a project with my son, for one thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tyler is the uh, Mississippi editor of Scorebook Live, which covers uh, high school sports uh, in Mississippi better than anyone. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about doing something like this for a long time. The opportunity presented itself. Uh, we're going to talk to a lot of uh, interesting people on the podcast. And uh, as a matter of fact, the, the first guest for this very first show uh, is Jake Mangum, the former Mississippi State baseball star who's now hitting home runs at Class AA, uh, which is pretty surprising to me. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see it because that's what it takes to get to the big leagues right now. But uh, we recorded the first one two weeks ago, and, and I told Jake when it would air, and he said, well, I hope you're in Omaha, <laughs> and here I am. So, Yeah, yeah. well, uh, I'm just super pumped about this podcast. It's going to be great. Uh, you mentioned, of course, it's your son, Tyler. Tyler, I'll mention, is, is what, third, third generation Cleveland covering Mississippi sports, right? Because you're, you're – Yeah, my dad – my dad uh, is a Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame uh, who was the sports editor of the Hattiesburg American when I was born and then came to Jackson for a year at the uh, Jackson Daily News and then, of course, went back and was the sports publicity director at Southern Miss forever. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, my brother, Bobby, is uh, in some circles in Mississippi is a lot more famous than I am, the people that hunt and fish, uh, I all know Bobby and there's a, there's probably more of those than even go to baseball games. So, uh, and then, and then Tyler, Tyler took it up too. I had no better luck in talking him out of it than my dad had in talking me out of it. So, <laughs> so well, yeah, so it runs in the blood, I guess. It's, it's going to be such a pleasure to kind of to kind of see y'all interact with each other or hear y'all interact with each other on that thing. And I can't wait uh, to listen. Like I said, that that debuts uh, this Thursday, July 1st, uh, first episode on Thursday. And then there will be a new episode, I guess, uh, every Thursday moving forward. So every Thursday. And, um, you know, we're as I say, we're going to have a lot of interesting guests. Uh, one of the 
other first shows is going to be with the uh, podcast is going to be with Janet Marie Smith, who has changed the way uh, stadiums look in the in America, uh, particularly baseball stadiums. And she said she said a Jackson lady uh, sure. grew up in Northeast Jackson, went to school at Mississippi State, and uh, now works at Dodger Stadium in L.A. Uh, so she'll be on there. We've got, we're going to have lots of famous people. Some, some people not so famous, uh, but it's going to be fun. Sure. Well, y'all check out Mississippi Today's website for that. It'll also be, you can find that podcast starting Thursday on uh, any, any major platform you listen to podcasts on. So uh, looking forward to that, Rick. Um, so let's get to what we're here for today. Uh, you are, of course, in Omaha, like I said, you've been covering state's run in uh, the College World Series, uh, the, the championship best of three series begins tonight with Vanderbilt. Uh, Rick, set the scene for us. What What's it like in Omaha right now? Uh, and uh, just, just what, what's it like being up there? Well, uh, it looks like, first of all, there's not going to be a – shouldn't be a problem with weather today. Uh, it's been uh, – I'll tell you what I've noticed, especially uh, – since Saturday, yesterday, and today, is this place is getting a whole lot more maroon. There's a uh, there's a, a very definite maroon tint to Omaha right now. Uh, in my my motel, which is about five miles from the stadium, uh, seems like everybody every time I pass through the front pass by the front desk, there's another group of, of uh, maroon shirted uh, people checking in. Uh, and you know it's a lot of people say you know why in the college world series in chicago or new york or la or another uh, big american city but i don't know that there's uh, any other place in america that would wrap its arms around the, the college world series like omaha does it, it really has become uh you know, the College World Series and Omaha are synonymous with each other. The weather's generally pretty good this time of year. It's a tremendous facility. Uh, TD America Trade Park, it, it seats up to 25,000. My preference would be for old Rosenblatt Stadium, which is where this thing was held back when I first started coming to it. Uh, this doesn't have the I don't know the kind of down home feeling. The uh, it, it it doesn't have that Wrigley feel of, or Fenway Park appeal that sure. uh, that old Ro that Rosenblatt had. But it's it's a great it's a great venue and and again, Omaha is a, it really 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 wraps its arms around uh, college baseball. Sure. Rick, I think you, you said a minute ago before we got started that this is your seventh trip to the College World Series. Is that right? Yeah, I, I think this is my fifth time to follow State out here. And uh, and then I came once with Ole Miss and once with uh, Southern Miss. Tell us a little bit about how it's changed over the years. I mean, obviously the stadium, you know, the new stadium, is it makes a difference, as you just said. But uh, what what else is just sort of different about the culture and the environment and, and the just Omaha experience, College World Series experience? Well, you know, when I first started coming, newspaper it was print newspapers that were, you know, predominant, and uh, there was no internet. So uh, when you when you come here to Omaha now, you you're kind of on duty the whole time, you know, because there's news just witnessed what happened the other day with the, with the COVID thing with uh, North Carolina state. Uh, you're, you're on duty 24 hours. I remember when, when we used to come out here, when, when I was the columnist and, and Rusty Hampton was the beat writer for the, uh, that covered Mississippi state for the Clarion ledger. He was later the sports editor. But we come out here, we bring our golf clubs, you know, we would play golf uh, all day, eat a steak and then go cover a baseball game. And 
wake up the next morning and do it all again. I remember one time we played eight rounds of golf at uh, six different golf courses, and we called it the Omaha Open. Uh, <laughs> and uh, But it's changed now. It's, uh, the whole thing's changed. Um, there are not nearly as many sports writers, you know, not, not nearly as many newspapers that cover it anymore. Uh, it's uh, it's well uh, the whole sports world's like that to be honest with you but it, it's 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 really changed here and then this college world series is so much different than than even the ones uh in, in that, I, that i covered in 2019 and 2018 because everything's virtual i haven't talked to a coach or player in person since i've been here as i wrote you know last week uh, when I first got here, I had as much access to the players and coaches from my recliner in my living room as I do now that I'm here. Now I don't, I didn't have the, you don't, you don't get a sense of the atmosphere from your, from your recliner that you do once you're, once you're out here, but uh, it's just different. It's really different. And you, you can't, talk to everybody you'd like to talk to and I'll give you for instance uh, when State had that terrific come from behind win against Texas Saturday night ordinarily I would have really liked to have talked to uh, Braylon Skinner who scored the sure. winning run you know I mean great story pinch runs in the bottom of the ninth inning uh, still second base and then comes home on a single I mean, he can fly. He can really run. And I would love to talk to him, but he wasn't made available. Uh, and and there, there are things like that you, that you run in that you used to not run into. You used to, you know, Adam, the, the locker rooms were open. Yeah. They, they'd have a certain players they'd bring out for a press conference, but you could also go in the locker room and talk to anybody you wanted to. And, and that's different. And, uh, makes it a little bit harder to cover. And I, and I also think it's, it's a, uh, if I was a Mississippi state fan, I would have wanted to know what Braylon Skinner said, you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. As is a special moment. Uh, I, you know, as, as you wrote that night, Rick, I thought it, this was a, a great point as, as you so often make, but, um, you know, you have to have good players, great players, to get as far in a college world series like this, you know, you got the big hitters that we know you got the, the solid pitching, but you also have to have some surprises too. Uh, and, and that kind of leads me to, I think, uh, asking you a little bit about this team, this Mississippi state team, uh, touching on some of, you know, these past trips to Omaha, like you said, the five previous trips to cover state once Ole Miss, once, uh, Southern Miss, um, how do you stack this team up with some of those other great teams that we, we know about? Well, you know, the the best college baseball team I've ever covered was the 85 Mississippi State team that had Will Clark, Rafael Palmera, Jeff Wonder White, Wonder. Bobby Thigpen, four future major league all-stars. Uh, uh, that's the best team I ever covered. Uh, and it goes to show, that team more than any goes to show what it takes to win out here, because as I say, it's the best team I've ever seen, best college team I've ever seen. And they got a couple bad breaks and got put out. Uh, you've got to be, you've got to be really good, which this team is, but then you've got to be kind of lucky. And right now, uh, Adam, the biggest break of the tournament, you'd have to say has, has gone to Vanderbilt, which, didn't have, didn't sure. have to use their ace to win to get in this thing. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, they've got a well-rested uh, Jack Leiter tonight. Uh, I don't think anybody would want to face Jack Leiter in game one of the College World Series, uh, particularly when you know if you get to game three, who you're going to be facing then, Kumar Rocker. Uh but you you got to be good. You got to get the breaks. Uh, this team is. 
I'm heck I wrote back in in uh, March that I thought both state and Ole Miss had the talent to get here if they got the breaks and if they stayed healthy. Sure. And uh, you know, unfortunately for Ole Miss, they didn't. Uh, and uh, and state for the most part has. And the other thing about this state team that I think gives it. Uh, a really great chance to win it is is the experience. I mean, not many teams have as many players who have, the state does that have played in three of these things. Sure, sure. I mean, th- th- there's there's a, not only do they have that experience, but they can impart it to their teammates and kind of tell them what to expect and you know what to do and what not to do and and and. You know, when you've got guys that have, uh, like they have, Tanner Allen and Rowdy Jordan, and, uh, you know, that that's a big plus. Sure. I wonder a little bit, I mean, you, you kind of set the scene for us already. You talked about what it's like being in Omaha as a fan and as a sports writer. In your, in your time covering these things and talking to a lot of the players who have been there, what is this like for them? I mean, they do have experience being in Omaha. Not all of them have that experience being in the championship series. I mean, what is it like stepping on that field for them tonight? What is what does that pressure really feel like for them based on what you've heard over the years? Well, you know, for most of them, it's a dream come true. It's something they've been uh, been striving for for a lot of them for as long as they can remember. Uh, it's why they, they played travel ball all those years. It's why their parents, most of them spent a whole lot of money to keep them in travel ball all those years. Um, and it's a dream come true. Uh, you know, I wrote last week, I don't think there's ever been a player who played here in Omaha who got it and appreciated it like uh, Rusty Toms, who played on the 1998 and 99, or it may have been 97, 98. Um, But those two years that he played here, I've never seen another player embraced like he was by not just Mississippi State fans, but Omaha fans, just College World Series fans who – who uh, really did embrace him. I mean, you had the whole left field uh, seating area out there chanting, Rusty, Rusty, Rusty. (laughs) And then I've never seen a player who got it, who captured the moment, who really understood how special it all was as as Rusty did. Uh, And he's, by the way, I've talked to him. He's driving into Omaha any time now. In fact, we may be able to get him on one of these later in the week. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Uh, I know many fans would appreciate that. Again, myself, I'm not a Mississippi State fan, and I didn't know that full story until you wrote about it, I guess, what, a couple of years ago, Rick? And, uh, you know, there's there's been some follow-up this year to it. Yeah, I wrote about it, uh, of course, back when I was at the Claren Ledger in, in, in 98. Uh, of course, yeah. I wrote an awful lot about it, and then uh, I've, I've brought it up a few times since then, but then I wrote a, an extended piece, uh, I guess, a couple years ago, and uh, yeah, it's it's still special. It still brings hackles on my neck when I think back to him running out to uh, left field after the thing was over and State had been eliminated and just basically starting stripping down and throwing stuff up into the stands. It was, uh, it, w- it was, it was really one of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's some great storytelling. Hopefully we can get him on one of these, these Facebook live events this week, like you said. Um, so let's talk about the game tonight. You, you mentioned, you know, of course state has to face Jack Leiter, who uh, I'm a big Red Sox fan. And I think the Red Sox have the fourth pick of the draft this year. So I've been watching closely to see, you know, where these these really, really good college pitchers are going to go in the order. Um, I don't know that Jack Leiter is going to still be on the board in the MLB draft next month by pick number four. 
uh, that's that's a big deal. But tell us just a little bit about uh, more about tonight's game and, and what you're expecting to see. Well, uh, it, there's there's several things to watch for. Uh, State has to lay off lighters, breaking stuff when he throws it in the dirt, and which he often does. And uh, a lot of people can't lay off of it because it comes up there and, and, until it until it gets real close to you. It looks like a fastball, yeah. and then all of a sudden it just disappears from sight. Uh, he's he's terrific. If he's got command of his stuff, it's really really going to be. It's going to be tough. Uh, the other thing to look for is is whether Christian McLeod has his best stuff. He's fully capable of do, doing it. He's done it before. He's, he's had some games where he looks like a high draft choice himself. Uh, I'm talking about the left-hander who's going for state. And, yeah. uh, but, you you know, on, on the front end, you've got to give the edge right there to, to – to, lighter in Vanderbilt because you're talking about a guy who's probably going to be signing for three or four million dollars here uh real soon that's right and and you you've written about this Rick you you had a a game preview kind of post that posted on our website this morning if y'all haven't read that go check it out uh mississippitoday.org but uh even before today you kind of had written a little bit about lighter State jumped on him when they played him earlier this year. I guess was that in Nashville this year, Rick? Yeah, it was in Nashville. It was game two of a three-game series at at, uh, at Nashville, and uh, they got on him early. I mean, uh, they uh, Rowdy Rowdy Jordan hit a home run first batter of the game, and uh, I think Lighter ended up. Last in five innings, struck out eight, which is, you know, that's not surprising. He strikes out a lot of guys every time he pitches. Uh, but that was the one of the one game of the three games set that that State won. Uh, one of only four losses that Lighter had this year. The one of the other ones came in the uh, Bandy's first game here uh, against. Uh, North Carolina State, one nothing game. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's, he, he's, t he's tough. Uh, but, you know, again, guys like Tanner Allen, Rowdy Jordan, uh, they, they've seen him before. They've had, had some success against him. Uh, I think Logan Tanner, all, Logan Tanner also hit a home run against him in that, uh, in that game at Vanderbilt. Uh, so I mean they're 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 not cowed by him. They don't, you know they they believe they can beat him. Yeah. Uh, one other interesting thing since since Vanderbilt has been here, they haven't really hit the ball that well. Every one you know every one of their games has been a low scoring uh, game. Even the game they played Saturday against North Carolina State where. Uh, the Wolfpack only had 13 available players. That's right. And the guy who pitched, the guy who pitched had only pitched seven innings all season long and uh, and pitched, you know, pitched a hell of a game against uh, Vandy. And they, they lose uh, – Vandy wins three to one. But my point is Vanderbilt really hadn't been hitting the ball very well since they've been here, and that's another uh, – Another key thing to watch tonight, if McLeod's on, he can handle them. I was I was going to say, I think if, if you're Chris Lamonis, the Mississippi State head coach, uh, you're probably, if, if Leiter has his stuff, which, you know, he's well-rested, there's no reason to believe he wouldn't, but he might not. But if he does have his stuff, I guess you might want to ask your players to take a more patient approach to the plate, get that pitch count on up, and try to keep the game just as close as possible. Get Get to the eighth inning, Mississippi State's favorite inning, it seems, and uh, see, see what you can do if, if Leiter gets pulled. Yeah, uh, well, that's State's game anyway, offensively. They, 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 it's part of their game plan is to push the, uh, push that pitch count up, lay off bad pitches, uh, make him work, uh, make him throw a bunch of pitches, uh, 
you know, I mean, I, they would hope. And he and he's going to usually throw a lot of pitches anyway because he strikes out so many people. Um, so that's – you can rest assured that's part of State's game plan is to run that pitch count up there and hope to get him out of the game fifth, sixth inning. Sure. Rick, there's there's been this narrative that you wrote about, uh, I guess, yesterday on Sunday, uh, the day before the series began, that uh, because of what happened to NC State, you just mentioned it a minute ago, but of course, NC State, because of the NCAA's, uh, I'll call it controversial sort of policy on COVID testing and, uh, you know, their, their COVID policy, because of that, they were effectively disqualified from competition. Uh, basically sending the Vander, Vanderbilt to the championship series without having to actually win uh, both games again, that they played against NC State. There, there was one game left. The winner went to the championship series. Loser would go home. But um, you wrote about this narrative that exists that basically there should be an asterisk by this tournament. Whoever Whoever's to win this series between State and Vanderbilt uh, shouldn't be seen in the same light as the, the winners in, in past College World Series. Uh, Rick, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, rehash your argument there. Tell us tell us what you think about that narrative. Well, where Mississippi State is concerned, I just don't buy it. I mean, how could you put a asterisk beside this thing if State should go through and win it? I mean, what happened to North Carolina State, in my opinion, has made it harder for Mississippi State to win. Uh, my goodness, now now you're not just facing one well-rested uh, top five draft choice. You're, you're facing two. Uh, I'm like everybody else, including Chris Limonis, uh, and maybe everybody else except Vandy fans. Uh, it's, tr it's, it's, it borders on tragic what happened to North Carolina State. Uh, they were a Cinderella team, if there ever has been one. They started they started one and eight in their own conference, the ACC. Uh, I think they started four and nine in all and overall. Uh, and then uh, over the last half of the season and then the postseason, they've been as good as anybody. Uh, they had I mean, a tough, huh? Going to Bomb Stadium and beating the number one team in the country in Arkansas, two out of three in the Super Regionals, that's not nothing. Yeah, that's, yeah, no doubt. And 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 they had a tough regional, too, at Louisiana Tech. I mean, that's 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 no bargain. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't – I don't I, – I hate what happened to North Carolina State. And they were – I mean, you could you could understand maybe putting an asterisk by it if Vanderbilt happens to win it, although they had nothing to do with what happened to North Carolina State either. Sure. Just, I mean, we had these rules. We had these protocols coming into the tournament. Everybody knew what the rules were. Uh, it, this isn't the first time this has happened in NCAA competition. It's happened to what, Virginia Commonwealth in the NCAA basketball tournament. It's happened to uh, hockey teams. It's happened to, uh, I, I, think, I think it happened in soccer as well. But, it, but it's happened before where, where COVID, uh, bad COVID test, and then the contact tracing that's with it has made it impossible for teams to play. And, uh, you know, Adam, I've written it, and uh, probably you have too. I mean, COVID's affected every facet of our lives uh, over the past 18 months. Uh, and sadly, it's now had a uh, terrible, terrible effect on the College World Series, but I, it, it to me it it would not diminish uh, whoever wins this thing. It wouldn't diminish their achievement. It's just it's just sad that it happened that way. Sure. Well, uh, you're right. It is sad. I think it's sad for college baseball in general. Uh, 
certainly sad for that that team and their fans and coaches and uh, just can't can't imagine that heartbreak. But we are where we are, Rick. You, to your point, I mean, everybody was subject to the same rules. Uh, Mississippi State has certainly earned their way to where they are now. Uh, Vanderbilt is, I'd say, you know, as the reigning national champions, they're they're worthy of of at least being here. So uh, it should be a great series, Rick. Uh, we're we're right at thirty minutes. I, I think uh, we'll we'll cap it here. Uh, any parting thoughts, Rick? Any any other uh, anything else you want to mention before we we let you get get to it? No, I mean, uh, I, I appreciate people uh, joining us, and I hope they'll keep up with the with the coverage we're providing on MississippiToday.org. Uh, That's right. That's right. Rick, you're you're writing every after every game. Uh, you've been writing before every game too now. So uh, plenty plenty of uh, coverage of this Mississippi State run in the national championship series and. Uh, yeah, and, and I'll, I'll just reiterate one more time before we go. Uh, starting Thursday, Crooked Letter Sports, a new Mississippi Today podcast with uh, our, our esteemed uh, guest today and sports columnist Rick Cleveland and his son Tyler. Uh, Going to come out every Thursday starting July 1st. Uh, y'all, y'all follow along wherever you get your podcasts. So, Rick, thank you so much for this. Very insightful, as always. Thank you so much for your great coverage, and uh, uh, take it easy. We'll, we'll be watching tonight. Okay, buddy. Take care.